definitely were inspired. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I would like to just open up with a quick little prayer to the Lord, uh, especially for the omission that I on the pastoral prayer. I forgot to pray for the people who on the sick list. Okay? And I also want to pray for John, for Pastor John, that he uh, that the Lord will extend in traveling mercies. So Father, I ask you in the name of your precious son Jesus, I ask you to be with me today, Lord, as I deliver your message. And Father, I ask you to open up the eyes, the ears, and the hearts of the people in this congregation. I want to also ask for healing for the sick, the people that are on our sick list, Lord. And I would like also to ask for traveling mercies for our pastor who is away this weekend. And I just ask you to be with the God family, Lord, and to be with the Everyone in this congregation, we all need you, Lord. With you and through you, we can do all things. Without you, we can do nothing. I'd like to just pray that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Today we're going to do the Book of Romans. Okay. And as, as you're all well aware, last time I was here, I, I gave an invitation to the followers and to the uh, Come born again if you weren't already born. I also gave an invitation for people to come forward and rededicate their life. And of course, last week we had an anointing service. Okay? Now we've done all three of these things. Okay? What do we do next? What is the next progressive step that we must take? Do we sit on our haunches and wait for God to appear to us? Or do we seek God out? And my suggestion to you is that we must seek God out. You know, God will draw us. He will draw each and every one of us just so far that we have to take over. It reminds me of Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And he who opens that door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. But this is what we have to do. We have to open the door. We have to seek Jesus out. We have to seek the Father. And the only way we can get to the Father is through Jesus Christ. Okay? With that being said, we're going to be doing the book of Romans. Because what I'm going to suggest to you, the next thing that we should be doing is seeking our spiritual gifts. Okay? Seeking our spiritual gifts and also seeking our grace gifts. God gives us both. Once you become a believer in Jesus Christ and you become born again, you are gifted. Now some people only have one gift and some people have ten gifts. But we have to use what God gives us to the best of our ability or God will take it from us. Okay? And if you only have one gift, you have the privilege to ask God for more. You can pray to God for more gifts. So let's cover, we're going to do the book, book of Romans, chapter 12. Now there's 16 chapters in the book of Romans. And Paul, when he wrote all of his, both of his epistles, okay, he divided his epistles into two sections. He divided them into doctrinal, and he divided it into practical. All right. We're going to be doing chapter 12, which is the beginning of the practical side of Romans. All the way through 1 through 11 is all doctrine. Now he's going to show you how to use that doctrine. Okay? So that's where we're at. Okay? I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, 
each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are the members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. These are the things that God gives us when we are believers. I wrote down a few notes. You're all very blessed today, and I'm not going to be very long. <laughs> John tells me how many minutes I'm allowed to be up there to walk. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that, uh, that, that drives me crazy, every time I come up here to preach, I get a little nervous. I don't know why. I get the butterfly. <coughs> this is a wonderful audience to preach in front of. Okay? This, this church is full of loving people. Okay? This church is full of people who want to please God. And that's what, that's what this message is about. How do we please God? When we please God, according to Paul, would you take it back to verse 1, please? <coughs> okay, thank you. Paul says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. I want to tell you, this is a mouthful right here. We are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. If you were listening at all when I was talking about how we're supposed to be obedient to God's laws and His commandments when we are believers, okay? The only way we can please God is to be obedient. And Paul is telling us, all right, basically what he's talking about is in the Old Testament days, the Jewish people presented dead animals as a sacrifice, okay? But we are now a New Testament church. Okay? We now are to present ourselves to God as a living sacrifice. But in order for it to be presentable to God, it must be perfect. And the only way that that is perfect is by us living a Christian righteous lifestyle. Okay. Next one. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Oh, there's another mouthful right there. <coughs> We're not to be conformed to this evil world. This world is full of evil. We are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How in the world do we renew our mind? We renew our mind by getting into God's Word and by reading it down and by praying to God and communicating with God on a daily basis. This is how we renew our minds. And then what happens is a miracle happens. Your mind starts to be transformed. You start thinking godly things. You start thinking about, instead of thinking about the things that I gave up, you're saying to yourself, I know that this is for my benefit. This is good for me. And God only wants what's good for us. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought, but to think, <clears throat> but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Each one of us, when we become believers in Jesus Christ, when we become born again, God assigns us a measure of faith. God may assign Chris five, ten times more faith than me. And he may assign Art two times more faith than me. Right? Each one of us has a different amount of faith. Now, let me, let me follow that up by saying, 
do not, if, if you have been given a small amount of faith, then you should be praying to God, asking Him to increase it. And how do we increase our faith? The Bible says, faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the Word of God. So what we should be doing to increase the amount of faith that we have is reading and praying daily. And when you read and you pray daily, everything changes in your mindset. You become a much more spiritual person. You become what I call God conscious. Okay? Instead of being world conscious, you become God conscious. God is important. He's no longer a mystical character sitting on the top of the wall writing down everything you do wrong. Okay? He's a real, he's a living God. Okay? And he's a God that loves us. He loved us so much he sent his son to die for us. That's the kind of God we have. Okay. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. Well, I'm telling you, this chapter is just loaded with good, good material. Okay. Our bodies, we are the body, we are the church. Okay. This building that we're sitting in is nothing more than a building. Okay. This building houses God's church. All right. Each person in here who is a born again believer is a sanctuary for God. Each one of us is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And that's why that's why Paul is talking about presenting your body as a living sacrifice. Okay. When you start to understand all the things that Paul is talking about here, it, it blows your mind. It all just blends together. It's just like ham and cabbage. Okay? I'm always talking about food. <laughs> <laughs> but it blends together with ham and cabbage. It's just, it's so beautiful. It's a beautiful picture. And I know from my own personal experience, as I have studied God's Word, and as I became increasing in understanding of God's plan, for not only me, but for His church, Okay? It's like there's a big empty wall up there. And God is painting a picture for me. Okay? And all of a sudden, instead of having a blank wall up there, you can see God's wonderful plan for all of us. Okay? And that's what happens when you start getting into God's Word. I can promise you this. If you start reading God's Word every day, people will notice a difference in you. People will notice a difference in your behavior. Okay? And you want to know why? Because Jesus Christ is in your heart. Okay? You now have a circumcised heart. And that's exactly what God wants. Okay? He wants each and every one of us to have Jesus Christ, His Son, in our hearts. And then, and only then, is your body good enough to present to God. Only then. If Jesus Christ is not in your heart, don't even bother doing it. Because God's not looking at it. You must have Jesus Christ in your heart. You must have that circumcised heart. And then, then it is a perfect sacrifice. And it is pleasing to God. And this is what we all want to do as believers. We want to please God. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members, one of another. You know, I, I started to talk about the body. We're the body of Christ. Christ is the head. We're the body. All right. But the, every body, every body that uh, has different members. They have two hands, two feet, ten fingers, ten toes, two ears, a nose. Okay. And yet, uh, these are the, the members, okay? And many, many members make up the body of the church, okay? And each one of these members has a gift, okay? There's a gift. You know, one of the things I, I was listening to a preacher on, the, on television this morning, <laughs> it was funny because he was talking about members, the body. And he said, you know, if somebody cut their arm off, uh, and they're walking around and they don't have an arm, it's, it's not too alarming. But, but if 
you see an arm laying on the ground, it, it'll get your attention. Okay. But what he, the point he was trying to make, okay, that if if you're not using these numbers properly, and if they're cut off, they're dead. They're of no use to God. They're of absolutely no use to Him. So this is what we want to do. We want we want to seek our spiritual gifts out. Okay, and what Paul talks about here as we uh, go on. We have a gift that definitely according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Prophecy is not telling the future. Okay? It is not the telling of the future. Prophecy, as being mentioned by Paul here, okay, prophecy is the communicating God's message to his people. Encouraging for strength, for hope. That's what I'm doing right now. I am prophesying. Okay. I, am, I am delivering God's message to you folks today. Okay. That's what prophesying is. I want to make sure that it's clear that you don't get it confused with telling the future. Okay. Ministry, which is minister, the teacher in teaching, these are self-explanatory. I don't have to spend a lot of time on these. Next. The exhorter in exhortation. The giver in generosity. Uh, it, it, it always reminds me of, did anybody here ever hear of Swift, the meat packer? And, well, he's a, he's a very strong believer. And he ties the prophets of Swift's. Okay? He ties 25% of his prophets to God. Okay? 